My 81-year-old mother recently got her first tattoo and took her first ride on a Harley Davidson. So I thought to myself, what can I do to push myself outside of my comfort zone? And the answer was, make a beat. <laughs> Hi folks, I'm Mike and I hope you will. Using loops and samples is not normally the way I go about creating music. I'm much more of an acoustic guitar and lyrics kind of guy and I'll usually embellish that with more acoustic sounding instruments. So I decided to push myself outside of my comfort zone by making a beat with all that that implies. Now I had about five hours to do this so it was all done in kind of a rush and you may have expected that I would start off with the drums and I thought I was going to do that but at the very last minute I decided to start off with the keys. So I want to introduce you to the star of the show, 40's very own keys. This is a library from Native Instruments and it's a collection of sounds put together from the producer 40 who most famously has worked with Drake and I really wanted to use this because it lends itself to a kind of a lo-fi down tempo kind of piece which is what I wanted to go for on this occasion. Now the way this library works is um, each preset is made up of two different samples created by 40 and for example with this Cambridge Legion piano preset which I've got loaded up here it's made up of um, a square saw which is the A uh, sample and then a piano sound on the B okay. Now that sounds like this You don't have to stick with the two sounds which are there in the preset. You can swap them out. So I could go to this piano sound over here and swap it out, for example, with, um, let's go for rep keys, whatever that is. And now I've got something which sounds like this. Yep. So as well as swapping out the sounds, you can then go into this sound tab here and you can adapt each of the samples. So you can um, change the envelope the modulation envelope amplitude envelope there as well as a whole bunch of other controls there to adapt that sound and really come up with your own sound now the way i went about things was to go for one of the presets which is the ford keys preset okay and i didn't like the well, i wasn't keen on the a sound so i swapped it out for this a sound which is uh, blf and i ended up with this sound here now, I just played one chord there, but you kind of heard a second pulse. Have a listen again. Yeah, now that's what attracted me to this particular sound. And that's what I went ahead and used as my key sort of my key sound my key sound um, for the whole piece. Now I played at this point a random chord progression. I don't really know where it came from, but I liked it right away. And I think it set the sort of mellow, almost, I'm going to say, spooky tone to this particular piece of music. And the chord progression was this. So that set the basis for everything I was going to do. And the next thing I wanted to work on was the drums. So before I go into which drum sounds I used and how I put the drums together, I just wanted to quickly mention, you're going to see me using the machine, the plus from native instruments. This is an amazing piece of kit, which you can create whole pieces of music on like this standalone without the need of a computer as such. But in this case, I did have it hooked up to my computer because I really love the feel of the pads on this piece of gear. Um, I'm not going to talk about it too much now, but do check the links in the description and find out about the Machina Plus amazing piece of gear. Now, the library that I was using this time was another 40s own library, 40s own drums, again from Native Instruments along the same kind of theme. Um, really suitable, in my opinion, for this sort of down tempo um, sometimes lo-fi kind of style. Now, I just went through the different kits first off and sort of auditioned them, like so. This is the Fuller Park drums. Yeah, moving on, something here, DFA kit. Another one here, Queen Alley kit. 
And I eventually found the one I wanted. We'll look at that in a moment. But I also want to mention you can, of course, change the overall sound just like you could with the keys. And you co can go in and swap out different uh, parts of the kit to put together your own custom kit. And furthermore, you can then change the sound of each of the samples using the controls here, okay? So I ended up using a sort of an adapted version of this 312 basement kit, okay? Now, when I went ahead to sort of program the drums or play the drums, people who have watched my channel before know that I do do it in a specific way and that is to play different parts of the kit rather than try and play all the kit at the same time i'm just not dexterous enough on drum pads to do that and it may not even be possible with this particular uh, rhythm that i came up with but the first thing i wanted to do was play the hi-hat now i wanted them the hi-hat to be reasonably regular but i wanted to have some sort of subtle sort of almost ghost notes in there as well which is what you're going to hear so as i say i started off by recording the hi-hat and this kind of metal sound that was in the kit and it sounded like this when i played it <laughs> So that created a, a bassist there and then I went ahead and played the kick and snare sounds as, along with some other percussive sounds and this is what I did there. Now in the spirit of this kind of way of making music, I pretty much just um, looped that drum beat throughout the whole piece of music. There were some slight variations. I did something different in the intro later on. And then uh, towards the end, what I did was I used this control on the plugin, the delay control here, and I kind of uh, randomly pushed it up and down and that created some interesting sort of sub beats. So have a listen to that as I push this delay control up, yeah? And that essentially is all there was to the drums. So for the bass sound, I went back to 40's very own keys again. There's a nice collection of bass sounds in there. And what I ended up choosing was this Bootsy bass sound, okay, which sounds like this. Yeah, just nice sort of thumping low end in there, but with a little bit of grit in there as well. Now, in terms of the sound, the only thing I did uh, was go into my EQ here in Cape Walk on the Pro Channel, and I actually did a bit of a boost, quite a reasonable boost, actually, at just above 50 hertz there, okay? So I really wanted to push the limits of the low end here, okay? <laughs> Don't often find myself pushing this these types of sounds um, at the low end down there in this way. Did I go too far? Uh, you can let me know in the comments down below about that when you hear the final piece, but it was just sounding good to me and I did want to push the limits with it a little bit. So that's the only thing I did to um, the sound of this instrument at all. Now, the key thing for me was that the bass was going to have a relationship with the drums, particularly with the kick drum. Now, I say a relationship because I think perhaps we can get confused about this. It doesn't have to be playing on exactly the same beats but perhaps some more of the important beats. So let's have a listen to what I came up with in terms of just the bass and the drums together. So it's kind of tapping into some of the variations that I actually have with the kick. And let's just have a quick listen to how it sounds with the keys we already had. So that set my basic vibe and now I had to add a bunch of other stuff. Now I continued to use 40's very own keys to create some layers of sounds, okay? These are elements which came in and out of the song at different points, but also sometimes they were all played together. The first thing was this sort of uh, motif here, which I called the spooky riff and it sounded like this.
okay the next thing that i added i wanted something with a bit more aggression to it okay something with a, a bit of grit to it so i came up with this sort of lead line here it's sort of approaching an electric guitar sound or a distorted guitar sound there and then finally i wanted to add in this piano which was going to be almost like a march of doom <laughs> That's the way I was thinking of it anyway. But it had this very ploddy sort of sound to it. Okay, the piano sound, and it sounded like this. So that very almost monotonous rhythm to it. Now, all of those three together sounded like this. And then in with the final piece of music, they sounded like this. Now, you've always got to be careful, in my opinion, when doing this is about gauging when you've done too much. But definitely none of these pieces are really about something that you're going to focus in on as a listener, okay? They're creating textures and layers and also give me an ability to create dynamics in the piece of music by sort of adding them in and taking them away. Now, at this point, I still felt that need to have a kind of an acoustic instrument in there I gave into my inertia. But rather than grab my guitar and set up a microphone and record my guitar, I went for this library from Native Instruments, the Picked Nylon Library. I just wanted to have something right at the beginning in the intro which kind of got us into the mood along with our original keys. Okay, now this library is great if you want that kind of nylon guitar sound and very easy to get something sounding very, very cool because um, it kind of plays itself. Um, I'll, for example, play an A minor chord here and I'll end up getting this. Of course, it's tempo matched um, to whatever you're doing. So it's pretty easy to get the, uh, something pretty good going on. In my case, I wanted something which had a bit of rhythm to it, so I went for Calm C, okay, which sounded like this. Now, as well as having that kind of sound, um, I wanted to mess it up a bit, okay, so it wasn't sounding too natural. So for that, I used a plugin from Isotope called Vinyl. This is a free plugin, and this is where you can kind of mess things up and make them sound as though they're being played on a record. And I guess that was just to give me some contrast to what was going to come in a little bit later, which was a much cleaner, uh, more produced sound. Okay, so I, and it also just, I don't know, for some reason made this sound like a dreamy kind of memory feel at the beginning. I had to add something else a bit later on to give it that, but you'll get the idea when you hear the final piece. Let's have a listen to how this guitar sounded in the intro with that uh, vinyl plug-in as well. So that's how I messed up a really nice sounding guitar. So at this point, I was a little bit stuck. I really wanted some female vocal on this piece of music, but I didn't have access to my vocalist, nor time to record her either, and I just didn't like the alternatives. Now, I was chatting to my good friend Ricky T. Brown, and he suggested a little bit of a workaround stroke cheat for me, which I was hesitant to use at first, but I must say I'm glad I did because it took me in a direction I wouldn't have gone in myself. He suggested a plugin called Arcade from Output. Now, what this does, once you insert it into your project, it hooks up to its library on the internet. You put in a key signature and a tempo, and it gives you a whole bunch of vocal samples which are going to uh, automatically fit your piece of music. Sounds like cheating because it is cheating, but nonetheless, I was pretty happy with the result. So I started off with this one. It's called I Got You, this, this particular preset, okay? And if I just press one key um, on my keyboard, you'll hear one of the phrases from this little preset. Oh, oh, oh. 
Here's another one. So obviously you can combine those in any order you want to come up with something I hesitate to use unique, but at least the, the arrangement of them is unique. Now, there's also some other keys on here, the black keys, which uh, actually change the sound in some way. So we could play this sound. So those keys just mess around with it. I didn't use any of those features. I just used the basic phrases. And this is what I came up with initially. I wanted to do something which people often ask me about. I wanted the last part of the phrases to have a delay effect on them, but in my case, just one delay. Rather than use any delay plugins or anything like that, I did it the very simple way. I just duplicated the track and then I repeated those phrases. And then on that track, I put the volume a little bit um, lower and just treated them a little bit differently. So I then ended up with this for the female vocal part. Now, I was really enjoying what I had so far, but then I thought, hmm, it'd be nice to have a male vocal to contrast this and something with a little bit more sort of lyrical content in it. Now, to cut a long story short, I used exactly the same plugin for the male vocals. I used a preset called Always Crying, and this is what I came up with. phenomena for me kind of occurred although I was playing sort of random phrases of lyrics it kind of felt like they went together and as if they may have been written that way do you agree with me do they sound convincing in that way I don't know they do to me let me know what you think in the comments down below now I kept hearing harmony in there I just the more I listened to it, I thought I've got to have a harmony in there so initially I thought I'll do it the easy way I will just duplicate this track and using Melodyne, a pitch correction plugin, I will change the pitch and create the harmony on the fly. Well, listen to how that turned out. Okay-ish. But I didn't like it. It sounded way too robotic to me. Maybe I could have messed around with it a bit more. But I thought, ah, what the hell? I've got a microphone right in front of me. Why don't I just sing the harmony? Which is exactly is exactly what I did. And it sounded like this. Now, the observant amongst, observant amongst you will have noticed that I processed my harmony vocals quite heavily, in fact. So let me give you an idea of the signal chain um, for those vocals. I started off with my EQ, just adding in quite a bit of high end down here. So massive high end boost to create some airiness in there, okay? I then actually use this plugin i sort of used this before i did that eq boost but i just used this enhanced eq plugin from native instruments to just to boost around about one half um there's no there was no real need for me to do that it was just initially what i went for uh, before i'd used the built-in one with cakewalk now um i also used this plugin from native instruments called coral kind of like a chorus effect um, um is added to it there and then I use this plugin again from Native Instruments, a bit of a theme here. I think they're all just there together. Uh, Byte, I use this to really sort of degrade um, the signal. It's a great little plugin if you want to do that and make things perhaps sound like they were recorded at a lower bit depth, etc. And then finally, to add some reverb kind of effect in there, I use this plugin from Native Instruments called uh, Rome, I guess it's called. So let's have a listen to that by itself. I'll solo that and you can hear the final result with that signal chain. I've been changing. And then in with the original vocal. I've been changing. So 
we get quite a nice spacious effect there overall which is what i was going for and i wanted that harmony to kind of fit the style of that original vocal as well so let's have a listen to the final piece and you can let me know in the comments down below whether i succeeded in my task now when you do get towards the end of the piece a thumbnail is going to come up on the screen that's going to take you to a playlist where I run through the complete process of me recording a song from beginning to end in detail and then releasing it to the world. <laughs> <laughs> 